Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concept, Simply Explained. All right, in part one and two, we covered the difference between machine learning and a statistical learning. We also reviewed the definition of machine learning itself. Now in part three, I'll cover different types of machine learning algorithms, namely supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. So let's dive into it. If you remember from part two, we finished that part by asking three different questions about different types of machine learning algorithm. The first question was, in which type of machine learning algorithm both the inputs and outputs are given? Basically, this is the supervised machine learning, supervised. In supervised machine learning, both the inputs and the outputs are given. In another term, the data is labeled and the machine is expected to detect some meaningful patterns or relationship from the data, okay? So it means that the machine needs to make predictions, it needs to predict a class or a, or a value, right? So the outcome of this algorithm is going to be a learned pattern. Now, let me give you a very simple example to make sure that we all understand what's the definition of the supervised algorithm. Imagine uh, you want to ask your toddler to help you cleaning his messy playroom, right? There are toys all around the place that the toys are in different times, different sizes, different colors. And you're going to say, okay, let's make two buckets and label them as a small and large. You don't, let the, you don't let the toddler to start cleaning yet, right? You yourself will sort the toys based on their size, small and large, and then the toddler is going to just watch you at the step. After you sorted multiple toys, basically your toddler has been trained, now it is time to test your toddler. Hopefully, they will put the small and large toys in their correct buckets. This is an example of supervised model and the inputs where the inputs are toys and the outputs are two labeled buckets. And your toddler is observing the, uh, the, the, the outputs, right? So he knows that, okay, this, this toy is small, this toy is large and etc. All right, now let's talk about unsupervised. The second question that we dealt with last time is in which type of the algorithm only the inputs are given to the machine and the machines are expected to detect some patterns, not necessarily the meaningful ones, by looking at the data, right? So in this algorithm, only the inputs are given and there is no output. Well, or the output basically are not labeled. There's, there's no output there. And the algorithm is expected to, again, learn some patterns, but the difference here is that the patterns are, that are not necessarily meaningful, right? Now let's go back to our example. You know, same you, same toddler, same situation, and same messy room. Now you just stand aside without doing anything, but ask the toddler to start cleaning the room or sorting the toys. You basically let him decide what to do, right? He may end up coming up with different sorting patterns, maybe using different buckets based on the, based on the toy size, colors, or types, or even based on something that you never expected. For example, a bucket for the toys with wheels and a bucket for toys without wheels, right? So why should you ever do that? Because the toddler may come up with some other patterns in the data that you were completely ignorant of, right? So this is an example of unsupervised learning where the inputs, only the inputs are given and the toddler, the machine, is supposed to find the patterns in the data. Okay, now that we know what is supervised and what is unsupervised, let's talk about the third type, which is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning. So in this type of algorithm, both the inputs and outputs are given. Well, this is a little tricky because we don't necessarily call them inputs or outputs. There is an agent in this algorithm that it's going to explore and exploit the environment based on some predefined states and actions, right? And then it's going to get feedback from the environment and based on those feedback, it's going to 
come up with the optimal policy, with the optimal path through, through some tries and errors. And now, if you want some uh, real world examples in our day to day living, I can say, oh boy, the kids are all about reinforcement learning. When they start to walk or talk or even when they want to eat something, they're constantly receiving feedback from the environment and learn the right way of doing things by a try and error. So this is the very simple example of the reinforcement type of learning. Now let's move on to the formal definition of all these algorithms. Okay, starting with supervised learning, what kind of models we have and what are the examples? In supervised learning, computers learn to model relationship based on trained data. This is important. And the inputs and outputs, as already been discussed, are labeled for the algorithm. After learning the pattern, the, tr uh, the trained algorithms are used to predict outcomes for the test data. Okay, so what are the models? We have we're dealing with regression models and classification models. Regression models are the ones that the target variable, your left hand side variable, are continuous, right? So y is continuous. And the classification models are the one that the, your y variable, your target variable, is the categorical. Okay. Now let's look at a bunch of examples. So for example, for regression, you can think of, you know, these are mostly econ and finance examples, but you can extend it to any kind of field, right? Imagine you want to predict stock market returns, right? The stock market returns, so because return is continuous, it's an example of regression analysis, right? And you can think of many features out there, right? I think in part two, we talked about the this Apple stock market pricing and look at a bunch of those features, right? So for example, the fundamental analysis, we had some technical in it, indicators, we had some financial ratios and more advanced, you know, image processing and et cetera, right? Those are all the features. Another example is that, for example, you want to predict the housing prices. Again, prices are continuous, so this is an example of regression, and you can think of many, many the interesting features out there that have something to do with making predictions for the, the home prices, right? Then, the, the, another set of models are the basically the, the classifications, right? Uh, let's look at some examples. Imagine you want to generate buy, sell, or hold signals you know, in the stock market. So your target variable here can take three values, right? So you can, you can even label them in whatever you know, case you want. You can call it, for example, one, minus one, zero, or buy, sell, hold, and etc. right? So this is an, one example. Another example will be estimating the likelihood of a successful M&A or IPO or, or SPAC in financial market, right? So you have a bunch of features and at the end of the day, you want to predict that you want to calculate the likelihood or basically say that if it's going to be a failure or success, right? Third example, you can think of predicting credit default rate, right? It has, you know, it has huge applications in finance and insurance business. And basically you want to predict what's, uh, what's the probability of someone defaulting, right? And finally, you can think of uh, classifying the you know funds or ETFs based on the, if they are winning ones or losing ones, right? So these are some fi you know the finan finance related examples, but again, as I said, you can easily extend it to any kind of other fields. Okay, so now let's talk about the unsupervised learning. What kind of models and we have, and what are the examples, right? So in unsupervised learning, computers are trained on unlabeled data, as we talked about it earlier, without any specific guidance. The goal is to discover the underlying pattern and find groups of samples that behave similarly. Well, the objective is a little tricky. It's, it's a little fuzzy in unsupervised because basically the, you don't know what you're looking for, right? It's difficult to know how well you're doing. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to find groups of samples that behave similarly or find a linear combination of features with most variations, right? So what are, what are the types of unsupervised learning? We can have clustering and principal uh, no, dimensionality reduction, right? So in clustering, uh, basically you can, you can use clustering algorithm on your data set. And at the end of the day, maybe unexpected things can suddenly pop up, right? So let's look at a bunch of examples in, in finance. In finance, we usually group the companies based on their sectors or countries, right? 
But what if you want to make that grouping, you know, basically you want to make those companies into peer groups based on some non-standard characteristics like financial statement data or corporate characteristic, right? Remember, we are not, we don't necessarily know what we're looking for, right? And we hope that maybe some pattern pop up that we didn't completely expect. Right? So this is one example. Another example is that, for example, you, you are doing client profiling and asset allocation, right? Traditionally, how do we do asset allocation? We look at their income, time horizon, and more importantly, risk profile to just provide them with some uh, consulting in terms of asset allocation. But what if we, you know, we want to come up with some other patterns in the data? We want to profile the clients based on some uh, uh, some other characteristic that we are not aware of, right? So this is another uh, application of clustering in finance. And then finally, uh, port uh, we can do portfolio diversification and stock selection based on co-movement similarities. Instead of, again, instead of looking at different sectors in, finan in stock market, we want to say that, okay, maybe these companies had, if you're, they're, we want to put them in the same group because they have co-movements, right? We can look at their correlation with, with, uh, in their returns, right? So for example, here's an example. You know, we know that Ford, GM, maybe are in the same industry, Apple, Facebook, Google, again, in the same industry, and Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and UBS are in, they are in the banking industry, right? But what if, at the end of the day, if you look at their co-movement similarities, maybe you know maybe goldman sachs and apples are behaving very similarly so why put them in different buckets well maybe maybe we should then put we should put them in the same bucket okay so these were the examples of clustering another type of unsupervised learning uh, methods that we use is called dimensionality reduction right and we usually use dimensionality reduction to the as as the name suggests to reduce the, to reduce the dimension of the data set right so sometimes, you know, especially in finance, when you want to come up with uh, some features in order to predict the stock market return, there are hundreds of them. And if not exaggerating, thousands of features out there, right? And we know that if we necessarily not all of those thousands are useful, or maybe many of them are very highly correlated. So how can we reduce the dimensionality of the data? So this is another technique that we use. We call it dimensionality reduction, and it's a type of unsupervised learning. So an example is we want to identify the most predictive factors uh, underlying asset price movements, right? So this is basically to avoid what we call factor zoo in, in factor modeling asset pricing, okay? So in general, unsupervised learning methods are different from supervised learnings but can be useful as a pre-processing step for the supervised learning models. Okay, imagine you want to reduce the dimensionality of the data and then on top of that, apply a supervised learning model. So it can be a combination of the two. Now, finally, let's talk about reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, a computer or the agent learns from interacting with the environment, right? By producing actions and discovering rewards. Remember, you need to define the environment and actions and the reward system. The machine will then explore and exploit to maximize the reward. The new actions may not be immediately optimal. It means that there might, there might be a delay between actions and reward, uh, but the learning happens basically through millions of trials and errors at the end of the day. Okay? So let me give an example uh, of reinforcement learning in finance. So imagine uh, you're, you're talking about a virtual trader, right? At the end of the day, you want to design, a, design an agent that's going to trade the, on its own, right? So the virtual trader, the bot, is going to be our agent here. The agent is going to follow certain trading rules. These are the actions that are predefined. So we can say, okay, buy, sell, hold, and etc. So in this example, we have two, you know, basically two actions, buy and sell. And we, uh, the agent does it in a specific market, and that market is our environment, right? To maximize its profit. The profit is going to be the reward system, right? And it's, again, the, depending on the period of the, for example, tr based on the trading period, is it, is it minute base, hourly base, or daily? Uh, there, there can be a delay, there can be a significant delay between action and reward, right? Uh, but the, at the end of the day, the agent should be able to optimize itself by going over thousands of iterations 
and hopefully come up with the with the, the with the algorithm. So for example, says that okay, buy here, maybe sell here, buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here, and etc. Okay, so let's wrap it up uh, by question of the day. Uh, here is a list of machine learning applications in the real world. Can you make a guess which algorithm is used in each branch? I can give you a hint. Well, focus on the models themselves. So what was the algorithm that we have classification and regression models? What was the algorithm that we used for dimensionality reduction or clustering? And then what was the model that we used to basically get feedback from the environment? All right. So with that, I will see you in the next one.